Hey y'all, it's me. Um, today, we got a little bit of a sad video. But, as any of you that grew up with animals and on a farm understand, um, these days come. And even though we know that uh, our critters are getting older, it doesn't really prepare you so much, but um, that bigger little ring of rocks is where we laid Mika yesterday. She was um, the Anatolian Shepherd, somewhere between the age of 14 and 15. Erin wasn't positive because um, they got her as a rescue, and. Mika was a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful friend. Uh, Aiden had a really hard day yesterday because he doesn't really remember life before Mika. Uh, he was a tiny little man when they got her. But uh, I, I was never around Mika a whole lot <clears throat> when we would go to Georgia because she loved to be outside. Outside was her place. But when um, when Erin moved up here in November, her place was in the kitchen floor <laughs> with me. She spent a lot of time um, with me in the kitchen. I think that was probably the cooler room in the house. And being an Anatolian shepherd, she would get hot easily. So she was my kitchen buddy. So the six months that she's been here, I've grown very attached. And I'm sorry, y'all, I probably should have waited a few days to have done this video, but I know I had told y'all that, um, that I was going to do a live on Wednesday, but Wednesday was about the day that we decided that we needed to let Mika leave her very, very broken and painful old body. And, uh, I called the vet and made that appointment, um, Thankfully, we have a vet that um, comes to the farm and helps us when we have issues with our bigger critters. And she will also come to the farm and, and help to um, allow an, a pet to leave their body. So we didn't have to take Mika to the veterinarian. Um, she was able to pass out of this life just comfortable in her own home and um, so you can see she has a a beautiful little resting place I'll just make this little panoramic so you can see what her little grave is overseeing This week, Aiden is going to make a marker for her. He's He's been wanting to try his hand at some metal work. So he's going to make a metal marker for her. And now this little, this little pile of rocks next to her is one of my little female geese. And I found her this morning beside the pond. Um, she wasn't wounded, so I'm thinking that probably she is my little female. I think I've mentioned to y'all before that she is the one that couldn't see very well. And so possibly there was something more wrong with her than we were aware of. But uh, she and Mika will keep each other company now. So, y'all, I started not to even do this video because this video is supposed to be, these videos are supposed to be about encouragement. And uh, I just decided that... Um, 
it's not fair for me to not allow y'all to encourage me as well. And I mean, you do. You absolutely do. But right now, I guess I could use a little encouragement. And I know that some of you have been through this so recently yourselves because I've, I've read your messages about um, having to make that decision for your own precious little furry ones. And I understand. You know I do. You know I do. But uh, it's, it's just never easy. But uh, anyway, Hugh is, Hugh is putting up electric fence because he's going to let his, his little cows over here to graze and take care of some of this, this grass. They will absolutely love that. What is it? Okay. And he's got me fenced in. <laughs> Literally fenced in. So I'm going to walk down the edge of this, this garden. And you can see what's going on here. He and Aiden are going to grow. They're going to grow beans. And they're going to grow a lot of beans. A lot of greasy beans. For market. And for us to put in the canning jars as well. you hear this this little wagon bumping along behind me I apologize I'll be dropping it off down here in just a thought but um, anyway say hi pops huh? say hi hello everybody Tell them what you're up to today. Huh? Tell them what you're up to well, today. the pasture's not keeping up as good as it should. We didn't buy fertilizer this year, so we're going to try our hand at rotational grazing. And uh, so we're going to put the cattle in here, and then I'll put the fence around the garden and put them up there. And then I'm going to put them up there in that other field. As soon as I eat this, I'll light that field up. I'll probably be next. Yeah. Rotational grazing is something we've been wanting to really try more for a long time because it's so much better for the, the land and um, you don't have to have quite as much hay for the winter. And only if it snows. I believe the only time we have to have hay. Yeah. So only if it snows, we'll have to invest in some hay. Um, Hugh has decided we were going to buy the equipment because our equipment hadn't been used in many, 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 many years um, before Hugh's mom passed and was they, they just decided to sell it because Hugh's mama uh, rented the pasture land so we didn't need to keep haying equipment. We never really suspected we'd be back over here before, you know, this early on. But... Anyway, Hugh has decided that instead of investing, because we have such so few head of cattle, I mean, there's just a tiny little number of them, and to invest in hay equipment just doesn't make sense. So instead, if we keep the, the fields rotated, the rotational grazing, that will, they'll recover faster, they'll produce more, and then we will also be able to... Um, not have nearly as much hay to get us through the winter so that's that's the plan all right I'm gonna drop my little my little buggy off right there and we're gonna walk over here and look at these trees when they were working on the spring house roof there was a couple of y'all that had asked about the the trees in the background and their dogwoods and look at them are they not gorgeous such beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trees. And their flowers are coming along so beautifully. Nice big blooms. 
beautiful. Dogwood's one of my favorite trees. And this time of year, sometimes the mountains just look like they've got little dots of snowy patches where there's a, a cluster of dogwood trees. We'll go over here and look at this one. So pretty. All right. Now, let's go over here because I want to tell you <clears throat> what's up. Mine and Aaron and Corey's sleeve. Okay. I had told you all <clears throat> that the plan is to build a little retail porch basically right here where this, this pile of block are at. That we will have the ability to just um, to sell, you know, overruns and produce, and then when my cut flowers begin and the propagation, because uh, I'll be propagating the dogwoods and azaleas, rhododendron, uh, and so on and so forth. I see some rhododendron blooming up there, guys. Look, can you see in between? Just a little blip of pink. But anyway, it it'd be right here where this, this pile of mulch is at, in this corner. And we have the parking right there and a pile of tools where they were working on something yesterday and they got dumped. But anyway, this all this will be moved by the end of the week. I think they're planning on boxing everything up in plastic boxes, which we have an abundance of, and taking them down to the barn, which I call the, <laughs> the redneck storage. But, uh, <laughs> and no offense to any rednecks out there, please. But uh, it's just it's just funny because we do have lots of shelves set up in there from, um, and it's just filled with boxes. When Hugh and I moved over here, we moved from a fairly large home over in Canton, and we moved into the tiny little white house down there, and that was in 2018. So there was a whole lot of things that we didn't have the heart to get rid of at that moment in time some of the things we will never get rid of because they were they were jared's and uh not that they will ever even the boxes may never be opened again but um we're just not we're not gonna let them go because we just don't have the heart to then we don't have the heart to look through them and um so that'd be something that we'll pass that little enjoyable i'm being facetious that that little chore on to Aaron and Chelsea at some point in the future and I know that may not be a nice thing but right now it's the best I can do but uh, let's go up here and see what's going on in the garden I'm gonna come down here and work for a little while I need to hoe out and then I have just a couple tiny little trays left to put in the garden And this week, I've got to start my plants that go in the garden in mid-May to the end of May. It's that time. That's where the, the bigger bulk of the garden will be. Will be Look, bluebird. Did you see him? The bigger portion of the garden will be used. And it looks like I need to just come down here. Who needs to let the cattle in over here, it looks like. <laughs> But uh, I'm just going to have to scrape off the, the weeds off the very top of these beds and maybe put down some black plastic on them until, until May when they'll need to be planted. And, of course, the bulk of the what you're seeing is actually in the little walking trails. And those trails are going to be much wider in the actual permanent beds. Um, I don't know if I had mentioned this or not yet, but... We're planning to actually make raised beds that will be uh, 12 to 18 inches tall just because we have the lumber. So, And in, actually we'll be digging down about a foot and doing hugel culture on the bottom. And that will serve a couple of purposes. By doing that, by digging down 
and putting in the hugel culture is you know the the tree branches the small logs the um, anything like that that can go in first <clears throat> that will go in to fill up back to the ground level and then the dirt that came out of that that one in, one foot deep trench that will go in next so that will be a layer of just soil just garden soil and then to finish filling it up will be the compost so it sounds like a good plan we'll find out if it's a good plan <laughs> But that's that's our goal for right now is to implement that and we'll be starting down there somewhere this fall and but for for this year all we've got to do is just I'm gonna probably bring a my weed eater down and just chop down these, these this grass that's in the walkway and then just clean these beds out I don't know if you remember last year when I cleaned out that huge garden up there where Hughes bean poles are at um, just with my my garden rake and my um, my hoop hoe and that was a really big job but it worked really well and the garden stayed you know wasn't a problem to keep it cleaned out so that's what I plan on doing with with these little rows through here and yeah it looks a little intimidating but believe me it's not nearly as bad as that area up there was last year so it's doable it's just gonna take a minute but um, Anyway, well, let's look and see what's going on with these plants. I've got to uncover them. I'm hoping my geese don't come over here to join me today because I have to kind of scoot them off, make them go and do something different because they're nosy little dudes. The peas that are uncovered are doing okay. These are the ones that were actually in that black plastic, but uh, I told y'all that black plastic was not my friend. The onions look like they're doing well. They need to just get a few weeds knocked out. And the little onion seed, these little Walla Walla onions, there's not many of them that survived, but enough that we'll, we'll have a few for eating. But now, when I looked the other day, it looked like the asparagus were doing well. Yeah, I think they're still doing okay. They need cleaned out. The asparagus are, are these little feathery looking things right there. And they go back considerably. I had read just recently an idea for using this uh, fabric, which before next year I'll have I'll have um, be able to implement this. This end is the colored beets. Let's see what they're doing. They look pretty good too. Need a little bit of weeding. All right. Let's see what's going on right here. Oops. Let's just lift it. All right. That's the broccoli. And it goes way back. I don't know if I can... It's sagging, so it's hard to get a picture of it. But there's a lot of broccoli in there. They look good. And then... Well, hold on a minute, guys. I've got you pointing at the ground. Uh-huh. All right, who's calling me? we got to go see something. And in here, we've got some cut flowers. What are we looking at, Pop? I walked the corner of the sawmill shed where the electric fence stakes are. Uh-huh. That's where the egg chickens are laying. Big and time, take huh? a bucket. Uh oh. Corner of the sawmill shed where the. I gotta get my electric fence box. Where the electric fence stakes are right at? Right up there in the corner. Uh -huh. Behind the planer. Look across that fence where the electric fence stakes are. Okay. <laughs> We've been trying to find where the where the 
um, chickens are laying their eggs because we're not getting as many eggs as we thought we should be able to be getting this time of year because usually this time of the year there's tons of them. Hey Miss Panda. Hi darling. Yes good girl. But uh, <laughs> anyway there's another piece of plastic that gets to go to the dump this week. They have a big load to take out of the the chicken house that they burnt down yesterday all right y'all I guess we'll worry about the garden later I need to really have it just uncovered when I show y'all anyway so that it's not just you looking at the ground while I'm trying to uncover this week Miss Corey and I will be making soil blocks. That's something she's wanting to learn to do. And the soil blocks will be the larger size this time because it will be larger seed for one thing. And it will also be plants that will stay in the blocks a little bit longer. The plants, like tomatoes, Pops left a light on on his tractor and there's Ferdinand all spread out listen to him he'll start shaking his tail feathers hey bud who are you flirting with <laughs> all right now he said the corner where electric fence box or fence stakes were at, right? Is that what he said to me? I wouldn't know where that's at in here. Oh yes I do. I think I think I see them over here. Hi girls. Hi girls. Coming through. Coming through. Are you girls laying in weird spots? Hmm. Are you laying in weird spots? All right. Okay. He's right. Look at that. <laughs> you girls are just silly. Why do you find the most weird place to lay eggs? I'll have to float all of those. And just see if we're, we're good to go. All right. And yes, I know when y'all see this, it just looks like a huge, ginormous mess. That's what it looks like to me, too. But did you see I did. Huh? I did. did you Not yet. But, uh, did you bring the no. But there is a cleaning process going on. Eventually, all this stuff will. Have a neater place to exist. Did you try to count? No, I didn't. I'll t I'll bring a bucket over in a few minutes and get them. I'm gonna move all that stuff here in a little while. Okay. But the cool thing is that this is the week when the chicken wire does get put all the way around. Get put all the way around this fencing. And the geese and the chickens will all be contained. The ducks, no, they come and go as they please. Listen, you, if you think you're going to come and intimidate me, you're wrong. You're wrong. Come over here and I'll lift you up. I will. I will. If you come over here to me, I'll lift you up. They hate it when I do that. They hate it when I do that. I see you. But then they calm right down, and they're happy to be their own little weird squirrely self. No, don't you bite me. Don't you bite me. You can't bite me. It's not okay. And geese are unpredictable. They'll go from being just precious little, little lovey doodads to deciding they're going to bite you, just like this dude. Quit. 
Quit, quit. Weirdo. Weirdo. All right, I'll put down, I'll put it down and then I'll pick you up. I think this one will have to do. Check this out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. All right. Let's see if you can see him. Yeah. Now, I grab him by the neck and then I grab him by the body. And then I hold on to him. Let me show you. No, don't. No, no. You and I just talked about. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. We found egg stash. Yes, we did. You guys may not behave so badly. Bugger butt. I'll pick somebody else up and keep it up. <laughs> they really do hate it when I do that. But they'll they'll actually they'll actually fuss for just a minute and then they kind of go limp and let me hold them and pet them and talk to them and they're good. I did that to Ryan one day for like five minutes <clears throat> and he was good then for a long time. He didn't try to nip at anybody. Here's Ferdinand still flirting with the chickens. I don't ask questions. <laughs> I don't want to know. Turn around, baby. Turn around. Let's see you in the front. Ferdinand. Ferdinand, where's your girl? She'll come over here and you'll be in trouble. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hi darlings. Hi darlings. Look at you girls. He threw some scraps out this morning. They like the egg scrap or the, the eggshells. And actually these coffee filters, we use the, the coffee filters that are not bleached. And then I toss them over in the compost. Because they will compost along with everything else in there. That compost pile is pretty much ready to go to compost bin number two. I don't have anything for you, I promise. There's Isabella. Look what a pretty girl. Look what a pretty girl. Can you not control that, that man of yours over there? He's misbehaving. He's wildly confused. <laughs> she says, I really don't care. I've got places to go, things to do, people to see. <laughs> oh, well. Did they float? Did they float? No, not so I can tell. I run full of water. We'll let them sail a while, and then you can go from there. Okay, thank you. So he put water in there. Okay, honey, your light's on. Did you know that? See, Isabella is going into the chicken coop and running out the chickens. Aiden told me she was doing that. I have no idea why. So that's the reason they're laying in strange places is because she's running them out of the chicken coop. I don't know. We may have to figure out a bit of a different arrangement. I don't know why she does. Well, it was her house. And she was cooped up in it, remember, for two months when Aaron first moved up here? And so she just doesn't think anybody else ought to be in there without her permission. Hmm. All right, guys. I'm going to go inside. 
and get some dog hair up out of the floor. This evening we are doing a birthday dinner for Corey. Today is her birthday and she and Aaron have gone this morning looking for morel mushrooms. I think uh, foraging is something that's just a special passion for her and so I don't know they may find some but anyway if they do we'll probably put some on the grill. I don't know, I don't know how to cook morel mushrooms. I've never had one so we'll see what happens with them but anyway y'all be blessed you are loved and thank you for just listening to me and my my difficult little tirade this morning but um we are encouraging to each other and y'all encourage me so much and i appreciate it thank you love you bye bye